here in the scriptures. This is why the Lord has been talking to me. I need us to go to Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Because you're worried about the wrong thing. Amen. You, are, you, you know, if you are a soldier for Jesus Christ, and you, which is the name of, I'm so glad God gave us that name for his church. Amen. Because Christianity is like one of the toughest lifestyles you're going to live. I mean, especially when you first come into it, because Satan just don't mess with you. Because he know you're young, you're dumb, you, you just came into this, you don't know nothing. All right, so he's like, you go to party. It's okay. Lots of Christians go to parties. You don't have to drink. And you're a young Christian. Yeah, I can go. So he just pulls off kind of drinks. Why don't you go uh, watch a movie with your boyfriend? It's a little late, Satan. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. You're not going to do anything. You're saved now. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so you're constantly fighting against this devil, right? Yeah. Trying to build a God in your life. And it's a battle. You're just going back and forth. God, you can be saying, sending people that mad at you for no reason. And you're like, you just say, like, you can curse my blue. You know, really? <laughs> and it's like Satan is just messing with us, man, as Christians, you know, trying to pull us back into Hades. Because he knows that he was there when God was creating hell as well. Right. So he knows that this place is real. Yeah. So Satan is trying to constantly pull you back into the world. Right. To do these things. To get involved in these things. Yeah. Right. That he knows is going to destroy your life here. Yeah. Right. And it's going to really jack you up when you leave here. Right. right. Okay. Amen. So our battle against Satan is to stay saved. Yeah. Amen. You in Thessalonians chapter 2? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2? Yeah. Now. It says in, the, in, in Daniel chapter 9, he says, uh, he will offer a covenant to the many for seven years, okay? Meaning a seven-year covenant with the world over uh, this tribulation period of time. It says for the first three and a half years, it will be fine, but the second, not fine, like, you know, but it will be not as bad as the last three and a half years, okay? God prophesied that this man is coming that's going to present a bow or a covenant to the world. Okay? Now, the world doesn't believe because the world's not concerned with God. And the world can care less that Israel is back in the nation and they disappear for 2,520 years. But God wrote in the scripture in 1948, I'm going to bring them back. Right. Okay? Right. And they came back in 1948. Okay? So, they don't care about things of God. But you being a Christian, you have to understand how mighty your God is. Amen. He can not only keep you in the world, He can keep you in the world. I mean keep you. Amen. You understand? Amen. You don't have to be stressed about anything. You are a prayer away from solutions. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why I'm not, I'm not scared of earth. It's like bring it on. Don't make me pray. You know what I mean? Because well, we can get some things done. Right. But some of us, we'd rather stress than pray. Right. Some of us rather cry than pray. Right. You know what I mean? You cry and God said, take control of the atmosphere. Right. How, how am I going to do that, God? You're going to pray. Because when you pray, there's a thousands of angels standing by like this that will not move until you say something. And that's just how the spirit realm works. Amen. Until you say something. Why? Because there's a commander over this atmosphere, and his name is Jesus, Yahshua. So you gotta command me in the name of the top command to go and do something. So you say, in the name of Jesus, I need a call. And the angels go, get on it. And they run it out the car lots trying to get it prepared and get people to call you and say, girl, you know, we need to go here and get you a car. And then and, and, and you go off because you got faith, you go buy a, 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 a what, what some things to protect your car. Club. A club. You buy a club, you ain't got a car. But you all, you know what I mean? Because you got faith, right? And the people laugh at you. <laughs> you are stupid. And you know, no, no, I'm born again. I have the king on my side. I'm going to have you got a car to go to your club. See? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So when we pray, it makes things happen. That's 
right. When my son is sick this morning, I said to my wife, did you go pray for him? Did you pray for him? She said, oh, I forgot. Why would you do that? Yeah. If something's going on in the atmosphere, we need to take control of it. That's right. Exactly. You know what I mean? So that's how the spirit realm works, okay? Amen. But there's a world that doesn't understand that we serve a mighty God who has prophesied the world before the world came. Now watch this. In uh, Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. It says, Concerning the coming of the Lord, Jesus, and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brother, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy report or letter supposed to have come from us saying that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for the day of the Lord will not come until the rebellion occurs, and the man of lawlessness is revealed. How will we know he's been revealed? Because he will come forward and he will offer up a covenant of seven years. You will go, that's him. Yeah. Yep. Daniel said when he did this, we would know who the lawless man is. He's just been revealed. He just made the covenant. Now, um, I was talking to Deshaun this morning. And he's like, man, well, you know, are you going to church now? Well, no, no, no. Are you reading the Bible now? Well, no, we don't have time, really. I said, are you crazy? And it brought me back to what God has been speaking to me about all week. When the rapture didn't happen in 2010, everybody's like, he's a false prophet. So I'm crying. I go to God. Am I a false prophet? God said, you don't qualify. <laughs> I said, well, what, what? He said, well, you're a false prophet. Then Paul was a false prophet. Because Paul had the people thinking that the day of the Lord was going to come before they died. <laughs> so he said, you don't qualify as a false prophet. And he said, to be a false prophet, you have to tell people there's another way to heaven other than Jesus. You would have to tell, to be a false prophet, you would have to tell somebody hell doesn't exist. You know what I'm You would have to preach against me to be a false prophet. You know what I'm saying? So God said, you don't qualify. He said, you simply became human. And that's not a sin. You just, I don't even know that's going. You try to figure me out. when it happened. Because the Lord said, don't defend yourself. Just whatever they say, just take it and keep moving and keep preaching the gospel. And I did. And he said, but it's as stupid as you saying the sun's going to come up at 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. And you guys go out and the sun is not up at 5 in the morning. And you run to my house and say, you're a false prophet. God said, it's as stupid as that because you know what? It's pretty soon the sun is going to come up. You understand? And so therefore, they still need to prepare for the event. That's right. Yeah. So, the same God that did this yeah. said that this man is coming. Hallelujah. Okay? Yeah. So now it says here, now watch, I want to read this. It says, um, verse 3, don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. The man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or his worship. So that um, he sets himself up in God's temple and proclaiming himself to be God. That's the man that's coming. Yeah. That's why they want a temple rebuilt in Israel. You understand? Man. They want a temple rebuilt. America's, the Illuminatis and Masons are always trying to get the temple rebuilt in Israel. Amen. They have given so much money to that project. You know why? Because Satan has let them know when I come, I have to sit in the temple. Why does he want to sit in the temple? Because it is an abomination that will cause his destruction. You cannot sit in the Holy of Holies in Israel amongst his people and call yourself God. But Satan wants that temple rebuilt so that he can defile God. Yeah. And so that's what's going on in Israel right now. 
So right now what they're doing, they're adjusting the Middle East because they used those little puppet dictators long, as long as they could. Right. They said, okay, we're done with y'all. So if you notice last year, all the puppets been getting kicked out of the, all, the Arab, right. all the Arabic nations. Right. And right. they're putting in their own man, right? Right. right? And even to this very day, they're getting rid of the last of them, okay? Because right. right. they're setting it up because the Middle East has to be at peace for the Jews to believe that this, this man of sin is their Messiah. Right. And they're going to believe he's the Messiah. Why? Because he's going to come with peace and he's going to make them believe that this yeah. man yeah. got to be yeah. the Messiah. Yeah. Plus he rebuilt the temple. There are two Jewish prophecies about the coming of the Messiah. He will rebuild the temple and he will bring peace. Right. And you think Satan don't know that? Yeah, he when he's coming, he's coming with a peace covenant yep. and to rebuild the temple. Amen. Okay? It's coming rather you believe it or not because my God did this. Right. He spoke tonight about 1946, 2000 years before 1946 came. Okay? He brought them out of the North Country before there was the North Country there. You understand? Amen. So, we're talking about a real God. Now, it says um, in verse 5, don't you remember that when I uh, was with you, I used to tell you these things. And now you know what is holding him back so that he may be revealed at the proper time. So the time is coming. And we're talking about this, 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 this figure, okay? For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. But the one who now holds it back will continue to do so Till he is taken out of until he is taken out of the way. To what is taken out of the way? The one who is holding him back. Who's holding Satan back from doing what he wants to do? The Holy Spirit. So therefore, he is coming, but we have to leave before he comes. Amen. Yes. Let's continue. Yes. And it says, and then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth. Remember, he's coming on a cloud, and he's going to burn them up with the breath of his mouth. Okay? And it says, and, dest and, and destroy by the splendor of his coming. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan, displayed in all kind of counterfeit miracles, signs, and wonders. And in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. That's why God says I'm going to give them a last opportunity to repent. They, they refuse to believe the truth and be saved. And God says in verse 11, for this reason, because they re refuse the gospel, before, because they refuse the invitation to the kingdom of God, for this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion, so that they will, uh, so that that they will believe the lie, and so uh, that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. You understand what that's saying? If a person doesn't believe the gospel now, during the tribulation it's going to be a lot harder for him to believe the gospel. Because God is going to send them a delusion yeah. so that they won't believe. Amen. Amen. So all those people are, oh, I'm just in the tribulation, I'm going to come to Christ. Maybe, maybe not. So God is is speaking to us about a man who's coming, an event that's coming, a world situation that's coming. And he's telling us, hold on, be strong, stay close to me, because a man is coming into the world who is coming for the destruction of people. Amen. His idea is to murder. Yeah. Okay? They want to reduce the world population to 500 million. That's on the Georgia Guidestones. It's written in eight different languages by the Illuminati who's setting this thing up. You understand? Look, before Hitler began killing, you know what he did? He built concentration camps. Yeah. Before, I was going to say Obama, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before they get this done, you know what they've done? They 